Hey, it's Jeremy from OpticHouse.com. So I am working on layouts for Morningstar issue 5. This page is one where I'm sort of jumping around a little bit in the sense that usually in any task, whether it's art or personal or what have you, I like to tackle the most difficult part of the task first. And the reason why I didn't do it this way, in this case, I'm tackling the most difficult part last because I'm, you know, the page is going to be a large splash page, and I'm trying to keep, make myself keep going. It's really easy to get stuck on something. Like, for instance, the panel I just drew, there was an eye in the middle, a close-up of an eye, and it wasn't quite what I wanted, so I erased it. Instead of coming back and redrawing it, which would be my normal instinct, you know, as soon as I mess up on something, let me come back and tackle it again, I thought, why not move on to the next panel and then come back to the, the panel after it? And the logic of this thinking is that, you know, as artists, we're never happy with anything. It's a common recurring theme that comes up in my videos a lot. But what's important is to keep yourself moving forward. And what can you do to, to help that? Sometimes breaking the rhythm of beating your head against a wall and just moving on to another piece of the image, another piece of the comic page, or moving on to another page, and then coming back to the thing that was troubling you, that alone can kind of clear the decks mentally. So now in this page, I'm actually digging into what is the meat of it. This is, I want to say, either the first or second page. I think this is the opening page of issue five. And so we start with this large splash. It's not a whole splash page, but the central part of the page is taken up by a large dominant image. And I'm starting with um, Isbaal, you know, the, the female lead demon. And I'm starting with her first because she's going to be the focal point of what is going to become a very full, very complex, very, I don't want to say cluttered page because I'm fighting against clutter. In fact, that's one of the reasons why I found it really interesting to tackle this page. You know, dealing with dealing with images that are full of detail, but not detail for detail's sake. You know, trying to make things that aren't just clutter and trying to make sense out of all the different layers of details of just scribbling lines in, it's something that I struggle with. It's something that's challenging for me. But I think that's a good thing. You know, facing your challenges, you know, trying to, to fight and you know, push against your, the limits of your ability. It's also something I talk about a lot. So, in this page, I've got Isbaal surrounded by all of these demons, some corpses, you know, they've got bullet wounds in them, flies buzzing all over them, and, you know, maggots coming out. I mean, it's a pretty grisly post-battle scene, you know, dealing with sort of the after effects of the previous issue. And some are just very grievously wounded, you know, bullet wounds, missing limbs, you know, guts pouring out of them. Yeah, it's a pretty harsh way to start the issue, but the demons have gone through a lot of harsh shit in this issue. So, you know, that's where I'm, I'm going at with it. And in the same way that I was jumping around the page before, one of the reasons why I do that is also that if I kind of feel like I'm developing the whole page at the same time, it forces me or it aids me in not getting caught up on certain small little details. Now, I deviated from that in terms of fleshing out Isbaal a little bit more only because in a strange way, there's all this detail that's going to be going into the background. But I tried to think of it as Isbaal and everything that's around her. Like there's one unit of information is her the other unit of information is the wreckage and carnage of the previous battle. One of the things I also did in here was trying to improve my, my ability to draw backgrounds and make them feel like environments that characters can walk through. And when I first started this panel, you could see that I drew a grid out, which you can still kind of see in the background. I'm slowly filling it up. Now... That is a good thing to do in terms of like helping you aid in the placement of all the figures. But what I didn't do is properly lay out the grid as such that I made the um, the lines that were crossing. Not the lines that are heading towards the viewer, but to have the cross lines of the grid. I didn't have them recede in perspective properly. So they didn't get closer together at the rate that they should for the the distance vanishing in the background. 
And, you know, it's something that makes me think about, you know, wanting to re- revisit perspective. Actually, in this page, it just, um, the quick change here was that I stopped recording for a little while. I think it's because I also work on these pages when I'm uh, at my breaks at work on lunch. And so I don't have my equipment to record there. So I probably drew the rest of the the ones on that page. And then now I'm back at home finishing up the, uh, the details. So it's kind of, you can see what I do in the process. Kind of like you're jumping ahead a little bit. I go through, do all the red pencil, you know, going back and forth now doing, you know, the, the black pencil, the regular graphite to shore up the details. And even in this phase, I'm frequently flipping the page back over to kind of try and see exactly what it was I was thinking when I did the rough sketch. Because sometimes there's details when I'm looking at it, the reverse image, and I can't tell what the hell I did. The whole point of this phase is to clarify things so I can ink them. So I do a lot of flipping back and forth and saying, all right, what is this? And if it's not clear, sometimes I have to go back and redraw part of the red pencil area. Something else, I kind of screwed myself on my depth cues. Depth cues are things that help you realize how close or near something is. Like if you've got like a, a figure and he's a giant, it helps if you put another more human looking figure or a horse next to them looking tiny so you get a sense of how big they really are. And the way in which I screwed myself is that the demons are all different sizes. Some are close to human size, some are tiny creatures, some are giant, some are like mastodon, massive creatures. So it... In a way, like you kind of get the sense that most of these demons are close to similar size. The ones in the back should be small. But some of the demons that are close are humanoid size, close to Isabel size. Some are much larger and massive. So that's something that there's no easy way to solve that problem when you're dealing with creatures that come in all different sizes and you want to do a large shot of all of them across a large landscape. Uh, I think it was an interesting experiment to try, and it, I know that I tried again in this issue because there's lots of crowd shots. Because I jump around a lot of scenes in this issue, so it gives me a chance to experiment with that. I probably should have, you know, it'll be interesting to try and see if there's new ways I can tackle this or figure it out as I'm going along inking these pages. Um, I should have tried hanging all the figures in that crowd scene on the horizon, which is the thing where you draw the horizon line and you just figure out if all the characters' heads are at this level, you just put all the heads at that level, and then when you draw a tiny character or a big character, they'll be in perspective because it's all in relation to the horizon line. I mean, you can do it with the head, you can do it with the waist, the ankle, the knee, whatever body part you can. Um, I probably should have used that technique, which I was aware of. I've known of this technique since before I did the page. I just wasn't thinking about it when I was laying this out. So that's another thing. You always got to remember your fundamentals and all the different tools that are at your disposal mentally for composing a good page. That's it for now. Check out my website, OpticHouse.com. If you enjoy these videos, please share them. Also, sign up for my weekly newsletter to get a free digital download and see what else I'm working on. Go be creative.